Brad Buckner, I hear you got a new product. I have an interesting knife. Okay, interesting knife. Is it a, it's old a Gerber life, new life? Oh, it is a Gerber. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. And uh, I don't know, it's got probably a carabiner type thing so that when you close the knife, you open this up and put that on your belt loop or backpack or something like that. And it's got something on the other side. Not really sure how to get, that's the lock. Okay, so we're gonna fold that back up and take it out. Okay, this is just a little bit odd here. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is a multi-multi. Okay, so we have a screwdriver, uh, Phillips, and a flat. And let me close this up so I don't end up getting cut. Okay, so we got the blade. We have the two screwdrivers. We have something in there. Close the stuff up, pull it apart. Huh? Like that. Now pull the unit apart. Now hang on. And... <laughs> oh, okay, no wonder I couldn't get it out of there. So here we have pliers. Okay, that's really actually a lot of thinking. And then we have the wire cutters back in there. We got teeth and teeth here, needle nose pliers, and they actually really fit nice. Okay, and uh, I think that's it. We got the two screwdrivers, the pliers. Um, actually, yeah, I think that's it. The blade, the two screwdrivers, and the pliers. Uh, the way they hide things is pretty cool. So if we put this back over here like that, smash it back down, that's really cool. The way that the handle, uh, you know, curves like that. And what I was looking at through a hole in there was the jaw of the pliers. So we put it back together like that. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's a little bit heavy, okay. So then we do this now. We check it and see what we got here. Okay, it's it's about half sharp. You, you do have to kind of saw along like that. I tip into it so it slices better. So let's see now. Oh no. All right, well, let's use this one. Okay. You should, you should try your brand new one. You want to actually use it? Yeah, let's let's start okay. let's start the show, man. Let's start this show. All right. What do this, we have here, Brad? Well, this is brand new and it's made in black. This is an older product and it used to be made in China. And uh, so I up and decided one day I was going to go on a, a quest and I was going to get these made in the U.S. Well, it was very very expensive. And so anyway, a friend of a friend of a friend uh, that runs a mold company in uh, North Carolina and. Um, <coughs> So anyways, uh, him and I talked, and he goes, yeah, I can do that for you. And I'll have my uh, grandson, uh, or actually my, my boss's grandson needs to learn how to run the equipment, the machinery to make the mold. So I'll teach him, and then we'll use uh, part of the teaching as payment uh, for the mold. And so the mold actually cost $5,000. And uh, it took about a year to put this project together. It wasn't, you know, overly easy. If you just go to somebody and you put a couple of bushels, baskets of $100 bills on the table and say, I want this, you know, in 60 days or 90 days, you know, it'd happen easy. So these are made in North Carolina, made in USA, sharpens best, made in USA. Okay. And then on the other side is my name and my cell phone number. So these are black and why are they black? They're only going to be made in black once. And that's about 485 or so uh, units. Because and 485 instead of 500, because when I ordered the carbides, um, they actually didn't call the they didn't make like 525 or 535 carbides. And when they called them out down to where they were all perfect, uh, it was about 485 carbides. Okay, it takes three carbides to make one sharpener. You got two up here in the V notch, and then one longer one down here. Um, you'll notice that these are a little bit different. This has a little plate on the side and it has screws in it. Now, a lot of people are gonna jump right into this because I've already seen it. Oh, look at this, they made the carbides replaceable. No, we didn't make the carbides replaceable. It was easier to make them this way than to make them one piece, 
like the Chinese were doing because there's some little pins and if you own one of these in red or orange, take a look at it and you'll see holes in the head up here. That was in the mold where the little tiny pins came out and they set the carbides on it and then they put the mold together and then they squirted the hot plastic in there. And the guy in Gast uh, Gastonia, I think, North Carolina, um, said, uh, no, those little pins are gonna break too easy. I'm not gonna do that. So he made it in uh, two pieces. So you got a little door on this side. You got the whole body unit here and then little tiny screws in there. And I'm just gonna say this uh, to people when they buy them. Uh, and I'm just gonna say this once. I'm not gonna replace anything on this sharpener. If I see any monkeying with these little tiny Phillips screws, I'm not, I'm, I'm done. I'm not gonna do anything with it. Leave it alone. Don't unscrew them. Don't look in there. Don't let curiosity get the best of you. They work just fine. And yes, if you do this by your ear, you're gonna hear that they're a tiny bit loose. The reason they made them a tiny bit loose, they miked a whole bunch of the carbides and then they checked for what one was the biggest and then they made the inside of the mold cavity in here in the neighborhood of three to four thousandths bigger so that they never find the carbides that won't actually fit in there. So leave it alone. It's right, it's correct, it works. There's nothing wrong with it, all right? So with that said, let's go ahead and, and use the black. I've never used one of these black ones. Okay, they're made in black for a reason. They're gonna be kind of like the commemorative. They're gonna be the grand opening of the American made ones. If you actually own one of these long handles in black, which actually was the original Handy Sharp, okay? Um, if you own one in black, then you have one of the very first ones ever made in the U.S. Uh, in this style with the V-notch on one side and the open face on the other. And I'm not gonna make them again. So these are gonna be $25. You can pre-order them on sharpensbest.com. Okay, probably another 10, 15 days, we'll have a batch of them uh, in Cheyenne, Wyoming at my office. Um, but they are coming. I do have, I, I think I've total now, I've had like six of them. And um, so this is one of them. They're black, they are a commemorative. They're $25, pre-order them on sharpensbest.com. And uh, don't throw them away, don't give them away because if you own one of these, you come up to my table at some show, I go, oh, you're one of them that helped me bring them back to the US by buying them uh, the 500, okay? So let's go ahead and get going here. I, I showed you the paper test. I'm gonna show you the corner on the sharpener on the cutting edge of the knife. We're gonna match the bevel that's on it, which is way down. I can actually feel that right there. Okay, I'm gonna let it turn a little bit that way, not 90 degrees to the blade, but a little bit like that. And then just like this, don't push too hard on it. Let it work, don't make it work. This knife was pretty sharp to start with, so I'm not going to work on it very long. Just like that, what I did is I kind of started out towards the heel, watched the shine, and then I tipped, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna exaggerate, I tipped the knife up to about there, and I watched the shine on the blade when the shine is all the way across that plane, okay, on the secondary bevel that I know, and then I, uh, that I'm matching, and I've got a little tiny nick right here that I can see, and a little tiny something out there. So we're just gonna do this. I'm using a little more pressure, so I might be using an ounce and a half of pressure. I'm turning it like this, lengthways to the blade, because I actually want to slice a little bit of metal off that blade. And we're gonna call that good enough right there. Now we flip it over and we do this for just a little while, with super light pressure, and then do the same thing on this side. Then I flip the knife every pass, touch it really, really, notice my fingers are right up here within about a half an inch of the cutting surface on the carbide. Okay, I'm not back here like that. I don't have my hand here. I'm not trying to do this. I don't push at it like that. Okay, it's going to be just like this. My middle finger is touching about middle. Actually, it's in the, the middle uh, of the sharpener like that. Ring or <coughs> thumb and middle finger, index finger. Just like that, like that. Now I flip it every pass. Polish the blade. I'll do this 10, 10, 12 times, 15 on each side. Touch it super light. Get rid of the wire edge that sticks out there when the knife is sharp. And let's see now. Oop, gotta stay off the serrated edge. So if you can cut, oops, stay off the serrated edge. 
all right like that that's plenty sharp so when i say plenty sharp don't ever okay a work knife your pocket knife is generally your work knife okay it's your everyday carry you're going to cut zip ties with it you're going to cut some plastic boxes paper string tape uh you know whatever you need to do um i actually took my my small buck knife the other day and i was pounding it through the trim on a window because the 45 came out and one corner dropped down further so i turned the knife this way took my hammer and pounded the knife in and just cut it off so it looked right you know you, you do things like that with your pocket knife all right so let's see oh my gosh that won't move until it takes the fingernail right off so that's how you sharpen a knife like that so i'm going to run down through these match the bevel on the secondary and you know because there's this is flat there's your primary and there's your secondary bevel so we just do this, go right down through there like that. Now, I'm gonna stop at this little hole and I'm not gonna go into that one and that one. I'm gonna hold still and Chance, would you maybe move around in there and see how these really shine? And that one does not, that one and that one does not because I didn't touch them. My tungsten carbide corners are actually quite sharp. The metals, I don't, I'm just guessing, you can, you can go do all the math and scientific, all right? got to be probably five or six times harder if not more than that blade so if it's so much harder and I put a little bit of pressure on it and just run down through here okay that was real time now look at the shine on those teeth and then you can just go bump 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 like this don't press too hard on it and then flat on the back now I'm going to polish this blade just a little more because I can feel the slightest little tiny burr on it. So we just do that. All right, now let's see one more time here. Oops. Okay, the reason I say don't sharpen it until it's insanely, that's like crazy damn sharp anyway. And it won't slide. Ah, all right, let's just do it. Oh. Okay, and right in that little area. Okay, don't make your knives so sharp that they can't hold an edge. I don't care what they're made out of, unless they're made out of tungsten carbide. You can actually get a knife so sharp that you use it two or three times, there goes the edge, it just flattens. Okay, and then you blame the knife. It's not the knife, it's the sharpening person, not the sharpener, and not the knife, and not the steel. Sometimes it's cheap steel, okay. Most of the time it's because you just made it too sharp. This is Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com. You take care. We'll see you later.